afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand. Welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Thursday, May 16, 2024. We'll have to 3.15 p.m. Eastern. We'll be having a reverse aging health call and all that tomorrow night, Friday, 17th, around 9 p.m. Eastern. Every time we breathe, our whole body glows brighter. Imagine that the aura around your body sparkles like a Christmas tree with 100,000 super tiny bulbs. Whenever you speak, all your lights shine, radiate, and sparkle. The love lights are coming out of your eyes, mouth, heart, hands, and even your genitals. Feel how these this energy from these lights are connecting with the energetic matrix throughout your body. It is inside of your DNA, blood, bones, your brain, your entire physical body is totally turned on and it can only receive and broadcast messages of joy, lightness, love. Within a week, you should be able to see and feel the difference between when your love lights are off and when they are on. Your sparkling light energy is very powerful and highly magnetic. So when you know you are lit up, command your body that this is going to be your new base signal and frequency pattern. Tell your body that this is how every cell inside will be naturally broadcasting energy into this universe from now on. All things are created twice. There are There's a mental or first creation and a physical or second creation to all things. Begin with the end in mind, Stephen Covey. Good, God, love are all the same thing. If the being keeps continuously thinking of any one of these, it will be enough. All meditation is for the purpose of keeping out all other thoughts. Ron Rishi. They were both human and divine. So it should be understood or comprehended to meet some major form of resistance, energetic block or emotional weakness when we're really looking to turn our love lights on. We all have some unconscious issues to letting in and trusting in love. Whenever we believe we are unworthy, unlovable, or unwanted, it is all one big illusion. Every block we encounter is the stepping stone which provides the experience of rising higher when we overcome it. So if and when you feel judgmental, empty, embarrassed, ashamed, depressed, or just emotionally numb, when doing this, kind of a meditation, welcome that energy. All, allow it to have more space. Then take extra time relaxing your entire body. 
so you can open up to a new experience of this life. Allow your body to become very soft, quiet, and as relaxed as possible until a stillness happens. The best way you can open up blocked energy and turn on your super manifesting love magnet powers fully. Now some of us, we keep it bottled up. I mean, it's it's like a a bomb waiting to go off. A lot of people just keep it bound up inside them. When you aren't, let's say if you're not a visual person and believe that seeing the lights in this meditation is not going to work for you, no worries. The real gold is in feeling what the brighter love and lightness sensations are like from the inside. Remember the most loving experiences you've had in your past. Tap into that energy from those memories. Healing gentle soft energy that you can let in will naturally release any skeptical controlling or negative feelings inside. Now the mind is super powerful. And when we understand this power, we can yield it, manifest whatever we want. We can wield it. This shift happens the day you are truly done playing the game of being disempowered, needy, codependent, or someone who is lacking love. When you are practicing this love magnet technique, instead of spending your time wishing you were loved, you'll be exploring the game of love, precious and how sweet, precious and lovable you truly are. You'll know you've become a true super manifesting love magnet when you feel this sweet glowing energy which is naturally radiating inside your heart all day long, 24-7, as long as you're in that body. After about one week, you'll wake up and begin feeling the energy is already moving and alive inside you. And as you naturally go about your day, it will continue bubbling up from within. The most wonderful situations in your life manifest the more often you stop to feel that this love is real. The stronger the energy becomes, the more goodies you'll manifest in the outer world. The universe, this universe allows, always rewards those who are open to receive the rewards. Many are not. Quote from Ramana Marishi, it sums it all up. To bring about peace means to be free from thoughts and to abide as pure consciousness. No matter what horrific things that have happened in your past, the universe is not holding on to them. It is not judging you. It is not condemning you for holding you to someone less than sacred. This universe sees all of you, knows you are both human and divine. It honors and respects you exactly how you are. It is proud of the perfection that is created within you. And yes, this universe is totally in love with you. Whether you believe it or not, you are being deeply, eternally loved by life right now. You don't need someone in your bed to feel loved. 
the most exquisite healing feeling is already here, hidden deeper inside you. You can call off the search for love out there and set your destination for exploring the infinite universal source of love within. Now, this universal love is quite unique and unusual because it truly is deeply eternal loving. It is a deeper spiritual type of love than romantic love as it continues loving you no matter what you think, say, or do. Only this type of love can heal every cell inside you, enlighten your soul, set you free from all your worries, fears, and pain. This is what real love is all about. No matter what you have done to others or yourself throughout your life, the universe has forgiven you. It forgave you the moment you needed to be forgiven. This universal love is always instantly there, bubbling up peaceful, healing vibes within you. You simply have to sit back and let them in. Release the idea that love has to come from someone or something on the outside. Imagine it is a perpetual, uh, perpetual stream of light flowing from the most mysterious divine place on the inside. Now, feeling this great healing love may start out on a mental, physical, emotional, or perhaps a supersensual level for you. Do not be too concerned about how, where, or when it shows up. Just know it is infinitely deep and real. There is always plenty of it. Just when you thought it was gone, it comes rushing in. All you need to do is simply relax into your life for an extended period of time. Then it will come. It often shows itself as some profound spiritual experience at the beginning is your wake-up call. You know how powerful and real it truly is. Now, without this great, deep, eternal love flowing in our lives, we remain dumb and numb to our highest spiritual path and life purpose. We feel lost, empty, and lonely without it. We cannot imagine that there is a gold mine of greatness buried inside. All it takes is a little digging into our emotional being underneath the fears, doubts, and worries. With a small shovel of curiosity, we can find an amazing love at the core. This is the real gold when we're willing to stop playing with the fool's gold in our lives. The best things in this life begin manifesting what is real gold is that which will never change. What is that? The God that we are. The only thing that doesn't change is the only thing that's really real. Everything else is an illusion that we create for ourselves to entertain. See, in the beginning, it can be real tricky to imagine and feel something is happening in your body without blaming it on your mind. You may think, is this my mind or is it real? Not get caught up in your mind. Stay with the relaxing process. It will take time to soften the hard protective shell you have built around you. So do not give up so quickly or try to too hard using your brain. This universal love cannot be accessed by our willpower. It just happens all on its own accord. The miracle manifests when you can totally relax your body. Stop stressing about your life and let it all go. If you try too hard to let go, you are forcing things. And then this wonderful, deep, eternal love cannot flow. 
if you're not totally open and surrendered to the experience, your energy is too tight and you will miss it. This deeper quality of love is so intelligent and subtle that that has an exquisite timing of its own and will arrive effortlessly when you least expect it. Through letting go of trying to attain it, it attains you. If one stops scrutinizing one's own self, which is the source of bliss, there will be no more misery in this life. To ensure you are feeling universal love inside you every day, there's a few key things you can do. Some people believe that from all the traumatic experiences in their past, that they are unlovable, unworthy, and undeserving of receiving love. They think they must fix themselves or do something to receive love. And that love is not something available for free. Just by being the normal way they are, this is a fallacy. Any belief which sounds like this will block it. There's nothing we need to do or prove ourselves to be worthy of for this super sweet healing love to come in. It is our very birthright to be loved 24 hours a day. We are amazing divine beings, brilliant souls of light, and we deserve to have it all. We really do. All the darkness and all the lightness. And another thing is to watch vigilantly what your mind is doing randomly through the day. Notice where your mind is focusing and how it's perceiving reality. The mind is always creating some version of reality and rarely, clearly, the big universal picture. So in other words, it looks at one tree instead of the whole forest at one time. Seeing things as they actually are from the biggest perspective. The mind likes coloring life, believing today is a depressing gray day and last night was a red-hot night. The mind is so creative, it's inventing up its own reality in every breathing moment. Even though this universe is showering us with deep eternal love every minute, we cannot see or feel this cozy energy as long as the mind is busy. When the mind is not totally present in this moment, it becomes narrowed and unable to see and feel the universal love in all directions. We cannot enjoy the colorful rainbow that is actually forming outside when we are in the basement, so to speak. There are so many things happening in the mind that it is continuously making us blind to this great love. How do you, see, when, when you look at the watch, the civilization... And you see all these disruptions in relationships. What, what is the root cause of that? The root cause. We have not learned deeply and eternally to love ourselves. That's a huge transition. There are so many things happening in the mind that it is continuously making us blind to this great love. 
when we're taking on too much, having too many commitments to deal with, life can feel like it's pulling us apart instead of putting us back together. As long as our energy is focused outwards, we keep moving outwards instead of relaxing deeper inside, where the real love actually is. This great love is an inner journey, and that's all there is to it. Yeah, if, like if a tree only focuses on growing its branches and not the roots, it's going to fall over sooner or later. Some strong gust of wind comes by, it, it passes through. The tree's going to fall over because it didn't ever pay any attention to its roots. It, it's so cru- crucial for civilization to begin to understand completely, as a quote from Osho, love is possible only when there is a deep acceptance of one self, the other, the world. Acceptance creates the melu in which love grows, the soil in which love blooms. Deep acceptance of oneself. Now, how many of us, when you take a deep, long look inside yourself, and understand you are not judging yourself at all, okay? you will probably first notice the rotten parts in you. And these are what we consider our faults how we are unacceptable, unworthy, and unlovable. Yet, when you can keep on looking, you'll see all these are hard, are just hard critical ideas and that they stem from a needy place, desperate for love. Simply listen, as if from a distance, to whatever your fearful, negative, or critical voices are saying. Listen compassionately to what they are really needing. When we gently feel into what this critical voice is needing and afraid of becoming, the most amazing miracle occurs. We start to soften into the harsh voice, and it begins feeling more relaxed and at ease about it all. When we soften our energy around each criticism, they eventually melt away. And we can feel again the sweet sensitive innocence we had as a child. We can taste our original light enlightened spirit who is glowing with love and extremely lovable. The more time we spend being softer and light-hearted about this life, the younger we'll feel, and the more amazing this life will become. Drop any fear that says, what will other people think of me? Drop all that. Drop the fears. Anytime we are caught in thinking about what others think about us, we are losing time in deciding who we want to become and how we want to invert, invent our future self to be. Remember, your God-given right is to be totally wild, fun, foolish, and absolutely free. Whenever you desire, not anybody else, it's only when you desire. You can fully show up for this liberated life every day. You smerge with your amazing, blazing, brilliant, smiling, loving light inside and blast it everywhere. So you look at this this world 
right? And you say, well, this world's a mirror. It's our mirror. It's all of our mirror. And it is always reflecting what is going on inside us on a deeper level. It is always teaching us what we most need to learn, which is learning how to live deeply and completely in love 24-7. And when we base our lovableness on how others treat us, we miss the target. As long as we are focused on the mind or physical form of the other and not your spirit, we will forget all about universal love. Once we find the love inside of us, when you take a closer look at the world around you, all you will see is universal love in everyone and everything. Is it that way now? Mm -hmm. No. Not even close. You'll notice how the sun loves to shine its light on every living creature around the earth 24 hours a day. You'll appreciate how random people around this planet are providing you with all kinds of things. You just don't think about it. You really don't. You'll enjoy the fresh air that you have to breathe and stop taking for granted this continuous beating heart that keeps you alive. You might also realize that you have a highly sensual sexual body. And start really enjoying your life with it. These are just a few gifts and sensual treats that this universe has given all of us. They are each meant to help us soften and relax deeper into the feeling of this universal love which is in every one of us right now. When love enters you, everything changes. You feel naturally relaxed as you are. You enjoy being alone, bathing in the raw experience of being you. There is a state of natural appreciation for all your dark parts just the way they are. You're able to feel loved by others without falling into being dependent, protected, or needy. They can be sad, mad, afraid, or disappointed. It doesn't matter. You have your connection to an infinite source, and they have theirs. You know that every situation is connected to love in the most creative way and form. And with this universe... Love blossoming inside, universal love blossoming inside, you'll feel loved everywhere you go. And no matter who you are with. So if you, you once we begin to embrace that we are um, just supremely powerful, omnipotent beings that never die, manifesting machines, We deserve the best of everything. Hook, line, sinker, everything. Sooner or later, most of us, I won't say all of us, because there's a lot of sleepers. And, you know, we take so many trips around the sun... And then we begin to understand, well, let's put it this way. We become aware enough where we start asking the question, what's the point of it all? I've heard people say this so, so many times. You know, what's the purpose of life anyway? What, you know, is it, is it to suffer like this? Is it always going to be this way? You know, what is the, what's the reason? 
why am I here? What am I doing here? I've heard that over and over again throughout the years. What great purpose do I serve? And this is a wonderful thing that we are asking these questions. It's not negative at all. We are basically gifted this level of understanding to reach this moment of our soul's deepest inquiry. Who do you think is asking these questions? Your soul. So with our soul's deepest inquiry, it needs to be honored with the utmost patience and persistence. This is the golden carrot which leads us to dig further inside so that we uncover the roots of why we are struggling to see how to alleviate any pain we are incurring. It is from returning to this juicy self-inquiry that we discover the most sacred answers to this life, which truly satisfy every crack and crevice of our being. Isn't it ironic that we're all enlightened beings and we don't know it? There's this big, huge door, right? All these iron locks on it. And that, and that, so it cannot come in, it just hits the door and bounces off. We all eventually will become enlightened beings. So it gets a little confusing. Well, I thought we are enlightened beings. We are. God's that we are. We just haven't made that connection yet. And it isn't some fairy tale experience or something just meant for, you know, always, there's always this, it's a mystique about, you know, only the sacred special people on the planet have that. And that's the ego mind telling you that. And that's complete bunk. It is the highest peak of our consciousness and is available to all beings in every moment. It is a genuinely grounded spiritual experience which transforms all the sour lemons in our lives into the most succulent sweet lemonade. The enlightened state is what lifts the veil, blinding us from the truth, allowing us to see just how magnificent we truly are. Now, one might say that, well, that's ego. That's you know, arrogance. Well, sure, if you're coming from the ego mind. But not when you come from the heart mind. You don't, you don't profess it outward. You know it with yourself and within yourself. The ego mind wants you to profess it tell this and say that and look at me and but your God self there's no reason to really when you discover who and what you are are you going to go run around telling people no there's that's ego mind So if, if any, when any of us step back and look at our world from the highest, most heavenly space, which means from our God within, it appears that we are this great symphony of souls all working together to reach a higher state of consciousness. Of course, we are also these separate beings with unique minds, hearts, and individual lives. Yet this separating aspect is not the biggest truth. The greatest truth is that we are intimately connected with everything 
and everyone else in this universe directly connected. When we surrender to this larger truth, weaving it throughout our day, the most tantalizing and enlightening moments just magically show up. We can feel the presence of something much larger than ourselves is guiding us to a more joyous state of being. We naturally become more sensually available to all the pleasure and joy we are here to experience in this deliciously exquisite existence. By being radically open, raw, naked, and deeply willing to receive whatever the divine existence is offering us in each moment. Enlightenment must pour into us. Simply has no other choice. When we completely empty out our cup, the universe has to fill it. The result is a truly intimate connection with this divine intelligence and an abundance of the richest manifesting energy radiating from our core. By living each moment from this raw, open, vulnerable place, we can become unstoppable in everything and anything that we do. Whenever we are deeply surrendered to this life, what do you think happens? What do you believe happened? And I, you know, when, when, when we are deeply surrendered to this life, life surrenders to us. We immediately feel this humble yet empowering connection with everything and everyone. There are no more feelings of lack, unworthiness, or separation with who we are. There's also no need to become someone powerful, superior, and special so that we cover up that unconscious, insecure self who feels inferior. We can allow all our darker parts to be seen, felt, and heard. Experience life in all possible ways. Good, bad, bittersweet, dark light, summer, winter. Experience all the dualities. Do not be afraid of experience, as many of us are. Because the more experience you have, the more mature you become. Also. Now you could take someone in their 90s, Yet, if they, if they insulated themselves throughout their lives and they stayed in that little bubble, you could take a 25-year-old being and they would have had more experience and understanding and maturity than that 90-year-old. Now, when we allow the to totality of our darkness and divinity to be revealed, right? How many, how many of us do, will do that as we start feeling into, exposing, and honoring, and welcoming all our dark and bright parts what, what we spend less energy controlling, holding back, hiding, and trying to contain our wild brilliance. And within this relaxation, our full divine nature can spring forth, shower upon this world. We are free to be spontaneous, creative, fully self-confident, and can access our core life energy. Naturally, we find ourselves resting and abiding in our spiritual essence. 
which does not judge or condemn anything or anyone, as it is the source of love itself. The most spiritually expansive, loving, healing, and magical experiences in this life instantly start manifesting. We take the risk to look within and be honest, vulnerable, real with who we think we are. When we remove all our masks with everyone in our lives, drop all our perceived burdens, shed our protective layers, and become totally transparent with everyone in this world, then the supreme enlightened reality sneaks into us. Enlightened perception of life takes over our mind, creating an energetic merging with our ego and spiritual essence. And we feel this awesome, wholesome love for ourselves and others everywhere we go. Be fearless in unraveling and exposing our most enlightened and horrific selves. You must be able to relax and truly be at okay with every good and bad idea that passes through our mind and emotions. We must choose to not get stuck on anything and become just like a slick surface, like a Teflon, a non-stick surface, which all thoughts just slide off of. We cannot take anything that is revealed personally. As every idea and concept we have about who we are was handed down to us. It's not your originality. It was handed down to us, all of us. Programmed in our subconscious mind from our parents, siblings, teachers, society, and all the many generations who were before them. Why do you, why do you think that we are absolutely lambasted with 60,000 thoughts every day and they're replayed? They're, none of them are ours. None of them. And once you come to the understanding that you can sit back, right, relax in your body and watch them. You can just watch them fly by. You know, and you go, oh, that's an ego mind. Okay, no, no, that's not my thought. Somebody else's thought, not mine. And you just watch them just kind of fly by like clouds in the sky. And you don't engage them. Now, when you, you want to create a thought, send it out, right? That's different. That's your thought. Not anybody else's, but yours. We are the sum cause of this entire universe. Resting in silence and stillness of mind, ironically, the cause of our enlightenment and what's blocking us from experiencing, experiencing it is the same thing. The mind. Why do you think we talk about the mind so much? When we transcend the mind, dropping any attachment we have to it, the brilliant light of our being can then shine through. And this brilliance is all we can see in every direction. Now, of course, a mind is essential to adventure into this great journey, into spiritual liberation. We first need to understand what the mind actually is so that one day we can become free from it.
Now, when you start to watch your mind, you will notice. You now, when I when I mean this, is that you're not you're not in it. You're stepped outside of it, and you're watching it. Not hard to do. Where are you at? You're in your heart mind. You're watching. You're watching the mind. Not judging it. But when you do, you'll notice this thing. It is always striving. It's always judging. It's always analyzing and needing to achieve something. Isn't it? Now, you may have lived your entire life so far completely wrapped up in the head, which is always focusing on thoughts, concepts, right and wrong opinions, judgments, and belief systems. This is the secret to remaining unenlightened. As long as you're always up in the head thinking with your brain running the show and the rest of your heart, sex center, physical, sensual body is absolutely being completely ignored. What, what, what are the reasons we have these bodies? To enjoy them, right? To enjoy this life. What do most of us do? Because we live in the mind, right? We stay unenlightened. And that's a full body experience. This means the whole body is engaged in experiencing life. And not just the over-analytical mind. To step back from the mind requires total awareness. Every enlightened experience begins by first taking one step back from the mind and resting into a state of pure awareness. This is why we meditate. This is the, those of us that are seekers of enlightenment meditate. This is not to control the mind, yet to transcend all thinking completely, calling forth the experience of total silence, stillness, and pure awareness side. Stillness creates an automatic letting go of the constant control Domination and neediness of the mind. It's something that takes 100% of your devotion and dedication as the mind is deeply addicted to the outer search, not the inner. It will spend literally lifetimes searching for fulfillment in the outer world, believing this is the purpose of life. It will continuously try to fill your time on earth with new information, people, and special goodies out there, never questioning reality or what your heart or soul is really yearning for inside. And the secret to this enlightened stillness, mine, is learning how to be 100% surrendered to life. Most of us fight life. We don't surrender to it. This comes from giving more energy towards that natural trusting feeling in something bigger than you is running the entire show. The, this supreme God source and cosmic intelligence is very real and always connected with our core essence. Remember, we're a drop, a golden drop of the golden ocean. We are not separate from this vast sea of bliss until we get caught in the mind, believe we are.
When we rest in total stillness of mind, we instantly dissolve back into the sea of bliss, find freedom within it all. Join in the meditation. I'll return to close us out.
take an easy and slow breath in through the nose. Easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still. Shine the light of consciousness into your unconscious. You will illuminate your soul. Right now, there's a massive amount of hidden, unknown, buried material in our unconscious. Sometime today, for around 30 minutes, bring your awareness into your unconsciousness. How do you do this? Well, sit in the dark room, close your eyes, relax deeply into your belly and body, <clears throat> excuse me, and allow any thought to arise that may be hidden beneath the surface. When they do, the instant they enter your mind, imagine you're shining a bright golden spotlight on them immediately. However, this light is so powerful, it incinerates the thought. They dissolve instantly, giving more space for you inside. During this exercise, know that you are safe here, no matter what you experience. Even though you may see nothing and feel nothing, stay present to the void. You may feel your entire body and mind have disappeared. Simply remain present and aware that consciousness is always here. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and the following morning. And we will return here Friday, May 17, 2024, around 3.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call. And around 9 p.m. Eastern to continue our reverse aging health call and all that. Gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times. Be in the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal gratitude at all times. And watch the magic flow in.